generally speaking, all the whole world is in transference for the most part. What we know about demons is this is the fifth color being propaganda when they're transferred. So when we think about the transference of the find five, we get a blind hopeful person that doesn't have the cognitive difference or resources to recognize what they could be hopeful about. And so they're blindly hopeful about everything. And they're not going to do something about something that should be done because they're responsible. It's their responsibility. And so they abdicate and say, well, I hope it's going to get better. Well, I hope everything is going to be okay. Well, I hope they'll keep their promise. Well, I hope they won't be bad. Well, I hope they'll do this. Well, I hope they'll do that. When in fact, they're responsible to respond or to inform or whatever the case may be. So the nature of demons, what they're bringing to your life, transferred five, is that they're blinding you. Instead of knowing exactly what has to be fixed, what things must change, what needs to be conditioned or to be a conditioner, instead, you're blindly hopeful that it's all going to be okay. And that demon, that's the demon that fools you always. Because you're just like sitting on your hands, not doing anything. When you have a personal responsibility to stand up and tell the truth or live the truth or be the truth, truth is five. Fives can call the shots. You know, they're leaders archetypally. They are the exalted ones. So if you're five transferred to two, you're caught in this inability to move or do anything that you need to do something about. It's your responsibility to do something about that. So if you actually encounter a demon, you see demons, this is the demon that rides you personally. You're really in trouble because that's the hook of your not self, right? You've got a, now a demon rogue crystal bundle. It's not a demon, but you interpret it as such. You've got a rogue crystal bundle that you're interpreting as a demon. Oh, the demon made me do it or not. The demon said, I, you can't do that. I'll kill you. I'll kill your business. I'll kill your family. Yeah, the demon told you, don't do it. Not your responsibility. Just hope for the best. I know you signed your contract on the dotted line in blood, but yeah, just hope because it's not your place to do something about it, whispers the demon, whispers blind hope. When you're correct, though, as a two color motivation hope people, you're impervious to demons or for demons. That's the magic of a two at any level. It's your capacity to discern any level, meaning color, tone, the, the line quality, it's discerning, it's picky. So what can this be like, a two-color, hope-motivated person specifically? Their decision-making process being rooted in a deep cognitive recognition that does not require your interference. You know exactly what to wait for. You don't have to interfere. No need for interference. You can wait by the river and watch for the bodies of your enemies to float by because you know they're going to self-destruct without your involvement. In essence, this is the embodiment of the form principle as a personality message. You can wait. You can hope. You know when to wait because you have hope. Or you know when there's no hope. Hope being your motivational frequency. Non-action. You can wait, waiting, knowing what's worth waiting for. There we go.